funny because I would probably run circles around the governor right now, but <laughs> I feel like the sixth man coming off the bench, it's time for me to prove what this has done for me. And uh, very emotional moment. This has been a long time, long, long time. My name is Brent Bedgood, 40 years old, resident of Cincinnati, Ohio. October 23rd, 2001, I was indicted for one count of non-supportive dependent. The amount was $4,800. I felt like the rest of my life would be, would be defined by $4,800. Never been in trouble before. I've never been in trouble since then. I have my daughter full time the last seven years now. She lives in my residence. My daughter is 18 now, hearing impaired. And the reason I'm emotional is because I had to sit her down and tell her that I could not get a job to buy the devices that she need for hearing. Insurance says that hearing is not a necessity. So how do you tell your child? Insurance won't cover it and I can't afford it because I'm not working. But I made it past that. Due to the way that the law was written, to me, I could never be rehabilitated for that $4,800. I can never ever be eligible for an expungement. That's what I was told. After I went in front of a judge two times to try to get that expunged, the law had changed and told me I could not. The, the, the felony has been completely devastating. I firmly believe that the expungement laws as they exist today are too narrow. I think non-support offenses should not be considered felonies. At the very least, they should be expungible. While the court says I have fully and successfully paid my restitution, 11 years now separates me from my felony conviction date. I will never really truly be considered rehabilitated until this bill. I will be the first one. Success arrived when I chose to go back to school because I could, I, I, no one would hire me. Now mind you, I have this felony and I want to go into criminal justice. I was told on my campus visit that they could not, I had to sign a waiver that they could not find me a job because of my felony. They didn't even let me prove how intelligent I was. I chose to go to a small school in Kentucky where I graduated number two in my class. I took a program that would normally take somebody three or four years and I turned it into two years and one quarter. I didn't want anything to get in the way. I wasn't trying to prove anything to anyone else. It was to prove to myself that I am not that word. I am not a fellow. This, this law, is, you guys just don't know what it means. 
been with my wife, who's also had to struggle just as worse as I have, if not worse. Because she's got to pull the load. She's got to be, she's got to be the sole provider in my home. And well, she had to be. Granted, I was there for everything else. I washed all the clothes. I did my part around the house. I cooked every day, made sure she eats. Food is on the table when she comes home. It's still not enough. It's still not enough because that was not the way I was raised. I was raised to take care of my home. I was raised, I was raised to be a father, not a donor, not a baby's daddy. After I made my way through college, one of my professors, he left in the middle of my school year, took a job with the Cincinnati Urban League as an instructor. And uh, for my internship, he invited me to do my internship with him. And I said, this is not criminal justice. This is not criminal psychology. He said, yes, it is. Did 91 hours there, still not having a job, put in applications every day. My 91 hours went by so fast. Before I looked up, I was on 500 hours of volunteer time there. I went Monday through Friday, 7.45 to 4.30 every single day. I made it there before the building opened to prove to them that I was worthy of being let back in society. And those are things that you have to do. A job came available. The CEO actually came to me and asked me that I want the position. She seen my dedication and hard work. I accepted the position in February. I am now the outreach coordinator of a construction program funded by Ohio Department of Transportation. What's so great and ironic about this job I work with felons and hard to hire. I get them careers in construction, not a job. And it's any felon, any amount of felonies, any misdemeanor, I take anyone, I do not judge. I was put in this position for a reason. I'm not a judgmental person, but I am able to sit next to that person and tell them, I truly understand I've been in your shoes. I am able to make them smile. I am able to, to call contacts and get help, get housing, try to get things for them. I call my dad and ask my dad when some of them don't have clothes, could he provide clothes for them? Last month alone, I placed 23 out of 29 guys in a career in construction. I've been telling everyone that I'm passionate about working with hard to hires. It's truly a knack that I was given, it's a gift to work with those that others don't want to work with. This law, this, this, this change is going to be huge. We're going to put people to work. And I, I'm going to end by, by just thanking everyone for supporting it, for letting me tell my story. The governor, Senator Deanna Hoskins from Cincinnati, Stephen Johnson Groves. I've been right on the forefront with everybody, and I will continue to be on the forefront. I will continue to speak as much as I can to heal myself. It's been a long road. Ever since this road, our journey, 
Me and my wife have called ourselves Team Bed Good. 